When a ketone is treated with a base, hydrogens alpha to that carbonyl are particularly acidic and so they're removed. NaOH is a typical base. You may can follow this with arrow pushing. The negative charge goes on carbon. And this is stabilized by resonance. You picture this pair of electrons making a pi bond and this pi bond breaking to put the electrons on oxygen. And I put these structures in brackets. Neither one is exactly representative. The pair of them together represent what we really have. But it's useful to see both because it shows that we have negative charge on oxygen and excess electron density on this carbon as well. This is very straightforward and there's not much more to say when the carbon alpha to the carbonyl is not the stereogenic center. What changes when it is a stereogenic center? Take a look. I've written just one stereoisomer here. This happens to be the R configuration. And the alpha hydrogen is removed when it's treated with base. And this guy is stabilized by resonance, which we can picture with arrow pushing. Put these resonance structures in brackets to remind us we don't have either really. We have something that's a hybrid. But the one on the right helps us point out that this is an achiral molecule. This is not chiral. SP2 carbon. So everything is planar. The word for not chiral is achiral. And this has great consequence because when this is not chiral, protonating that with water to go back where we came from can happen from either side equally. So when we picture reprotonation of this anion, we can picture it happening from either side, front or back. If it happens from the back, we get the stereoisomer that we have here, the R configuration. If that protonation happens from the front, we get the S configuration. We've turned a single stereoisomer into a pair of enantiomers. They're a pair of enantiomers. They're of equal stability. So there's a 50-50 mixture. 50-50 mixture is known as a racemic mixture. And they're formed in equal amounts because they have equal stability. There is no preference for adding from one side or the other side because this enolate has no chirality. Water has no chirality. So there's no selection at all. The process of starting with one enantiomer and ending up with two enantiomers in equal amounts is a process called racemization. The enolate is formed, and when we reform it, we form both stereoisomers. This has great consequence because often one stereoisomer or the other is important biologically, and if you have one stereoisomer that works, but that compound is treated with base in the process of making a new molecule, that racemization ruins your stereochemical integrity, and you make an isomer that you don't want along with the one you want. Now let's take a look at the case when we have two stereogenic centers in the same molecule. What will be different? Here's what we had. Let's create another stereogenic center. This stereogenic center has an alpha hydrogen that's particularly acidic. This stereogenic center does not. So when we treat this with base, this hydrogen will be removed. The other one won't be. We can follow this with arrow pushing. Remove the proton, the negative charge on carbon. The enolate is stabilized by resonance. And now we have an enolate that's chiral because although we destroyed the chirality at the alpha carbon, the chirality at the beta carbon is unaffected. And because this molecule already has chirality, approached by water to protonate the enolate will occur from one side or the other in a preferential way. Without saying which preference will happen, we can say there will be a preference performing one stereochemistry over the other. And when we take the time to designate the chirality, we see that this is R and this is S. This is S and S. So we have two diastereomers, RS and SS. These are different compounds. They have different stabilities. And they'll be created in unequal amounts. So now we see the difference. A compound that has two stereogenic centers, one of which changes during enolate formation and reformation of the ketone, forms a pair of diastereomers, not enantiomers. And when diastereomers are formed, they're formed in unequal amounts. The protonation will occur from one side or the other, preferentially. We're not making a racemic mixture anymore. That would be an equal mixture of R and S. We're making a mixture of two diastereomers. This is a process that's called epimerization. Epimers are diastereomers that differ at one center. 
So there we are. When there's a stereogenic center, alpha carbonyl, that has a hydrogen on it, treatment with base racemizes the stereochemistry, if there's only one stereochemistry in the molecule, and it epimerizes the stereochemistry at the alpha carbon, if there's stereochemistry somewhere else in the molecule. Racemization creates an equal amount of two enantiomers. Epimerization creates unequal amounts of the diastereomers.